Picture this. You have many, many plants. They're your pride and joy. You conflate loving plants with a personality trait. You're in deep. One day, you bring a new plant home. A gift, no less. Little do you know, it harbors tiny horticultural hitchhikers. At first, nothing seems amiss, but lo, a few months go by, and you start seeing little black dots on the back of your ivies, and the leaves of your pothos are coming out stunted. You're puzzled, bamboozled even, until eventually you happen to notice that one of the larger dots is moving. You purchase insecticide immediately, but it does nothing but cajole you into a false sense of security for a few more months. The pestilence returns. You discover that these calamitous critters call themselves thrips and are immune to most pesticides, and they can fly. What to do? You embark on a quinquennial crusade to defeat the beasts, only to discover that they brought in reinforcements. Scale. By now you're at your wit's end, and you realize that all the joy has been slowly sapped from your once beloved hobby. You're in deep. I'm Jonathan, and today we're going to be talking about the dark side of having tons of plants. This feels insane. This feels absolutely, totally deranged, deluded, and insane. Take ten. I thought about giving up. Good riddance, fuckers. Good fucking riddance. So, what do you do about it? Well, first off, we ditched the second person. Um, this, the intro was about me, in case that wasn't clear. Um, <laughs> the goal today and over the next few weeks is simple. I want to get rid of the thrips and reclaim my love of plants. The plan is to spray every single leaf of every single plant with this to mix diatomaceous earth into the soil, then do it again in two weeks, and then introduce beneficial insects. I don't know if you can see it, but Capitan is currently up there trying to get around the plants, and honestly, I predict disaster. I, I predict... I predict disaster. Oh, to be a tiny cat in a giant plant jungle. It's day one of killing the thrips. So my setup is a dunk tank of insecticide for all of the plants that have vines. Basically, I'm just gonna shove all of the vines and flexible plants in there. Uh, for the ones that aren't flexible, I am gonna use the spray bottle. And for the plants with huge leaves, I'm gonna use the sponge. And I'm also going to sprinkle a bunch of diatomaceous earth into the soil. And hopefully, hopefully that'll do it. We're going to be working with the door to the bathroom closed, the fan on, and the capitan um, outside of the bathroom. Insecticides can be dangerous for pets, so make sure they're not exposed to them. I've been doing this the entire afternoon, still not done. I thought about giving up, but I'm not gonna give up. I, I did think about it. Our first casualty. How do I, how do I zoom in with one finger? Oh, oh, there we go. One less plant to take care of. No, I'm, so, I'm gonna save it, don't worry. It's 7 p.m. It literally took me like six, seven hours and I'm still not done cleaning up. It's just, it's just a lot. We're done. We're finally done the first round. Why is it so echoey in here? Anyway. So 
why are thrips and scale insects such a big problem? Thrips eat the sap in the leaves of your plants. They somehow, with their little thrip mouths, go into it and like, I don't know, suck the liquid out of the leaves and that's obviously not very good for the leaves. For ivy plants, it makes the leaves really dry and silvery and they make little like black dots all over the place, that's their poop. They also particularly like to eat the leaves at the base of the plant and the young and fragile leaves at the end of the plant. If you're wondering what they look like, I'm going to show a little clip in just a second, but for those of you who really don't want to know what they look like, it's honestly not that bad. They look like a little um, speck that's moving. Um, but if you don't want to see that, close your eyes right now. Close it. Close them right now. Okay, I'm showing it. I'm showing it. I'm showing it. I'm showing it. Okay, it's gone. It's safe for you to look. You could have also just skipped ahead, but you know, this is more fun, I think. Scale insects are a little bit different and a lot easier to get rid of, but basically they make the leaves of your plants super sticky. In case you're wondering what a scale insect looks like, I'm gonna show it in just a second. If you don't wanna see it, I'm just close your eyes. It's coming up right now. It's coming up in three, two, one. Okay, I'm showing it, I'm showing it, I'm showing it. I don't know why I'm moving my hands like this. I'm not showing it anymore, it's gone. I don't know why I'm closing my eyes. Why am I, why was I closing my eyes? That, that was a pretty useless part of that demonstration. <laughs> but, okay. <laughs> so the big problem with getting rid of thrips is that everything you do has to be centered around their life cycle. They start as eggs, then they hatch and turn into little baby thrips, and then they turn into adult thrips that lay eggs inside the leaves of your plants. So when you spray insecticide on all of your plants, you only kill the bugs on the surface. The eggs that are inside the leaves, they're totally safe. They are not affected by the insecticide at all, and they're gonna just keep hatching and then later make more thrips. So I did a little bit of research to figure out the exact life cycle of these fuckers, and um, the research isn't totally complete, so I had to make a few assumptions. Anyway, you absolutely have to use insecticide two, probably three times, in order to make sure that you get rid of all of them. While I was looking through these research papers, I also figured out exactly what kind of bug likes to eat the thrips. It's called Aureus insidiosus. We'll be ordering some Aureus insidiosus kind of as insurance, because as much as I want to think that I'm spraying all over these plants, there's probably some nooks and crannies that I've missed. Like, unfortunately, Kepi-10, who is right here, right next to me, does not eat thrips. That would be very practical. He eats most other, most other types of bugs, though. And he loves it. It's day two of killing the thrips. Um, but are we gonna be showing that today? No, no we will not, because Surprise, surprise, something that takes all day to do takes even longer when you're also filming it. Before dealing with the thrips, I wanna make a color palette and run a few errands because it's my dad's birthday and um, I wanna pick up some gifts for him. palette he makes. Capitan, you have a beautiful palette to you. back home and look who is waiting for me. I got myself a little treat. I got 
the screen bottle. When I show you guys the before and after of my shower setup in the last video, I was a little, I was a little underwhelmed. I was like, hmm, I'm not sure if this is better. I missed the green. Taking some B-roll of the butt, okay, thank you. On top of getting rid of the thrips, I also wanna clean up some of the damage they've done. So that means trimming some dead vines, propagating some others, that kind of thing. You need at least one node um, in order to make new roots and uh, leaves. I like to do two, but uh, just experiment. See what works for you. This vine in the shower has this super, super long stem with no leaves and we're gonna cut that. It's just, this is too much stem, not enough leaf. It kind of hurts me to do that a little bit, but I know that it's gonna grow back. Also, every time that you cut off the ends of your pothos and ivies, it encourages them to have new growth further up on the stem. It doesn't always work. Sometimes it just grows out of the same spot, but it's a good way to sort of try to reverse the damage of the thrips. Some of the roots I'm gonna keep, like this one, just because I'm uh, kind of a fan of the aesthetic. Cutting the aerial roots of your monsteras and ivies does not hurt the plant. Well, I mean, maybe it does, we don't actually know, but it doesn't damage the plant irreparably. My typical work spot, which is here, is not doing it for me today. So, where are we going? To Barabeur. Now some of you might find this a little bit gauche, but I don't care. I am gonna to present to you two facts. Fact number one, I made a one hour time-lapse video where I take care of plants and relaxing music is playing. Fact number two, YouTube requires 4,000 watch hours in a year in order to monetize a channel. I guess there's also a fact number three, I have an oven. That's not a fact, that's the oven. Do what you will with that information. You are free to do whatever you want.
Yes, out the window. <laughs> I was thinking about using this as a microphone. It's like, I don't know what this is called. I think it's really pretty, these like little yellow balls of something. This whole process has made me realize that there's a couple of rules that you have to be aware of if you want to have lots of plants. The first one is that you and your home are going to have a certain number of plants that you can accommodate while keeping them happy. Now that number is going to be a little bit different for everyone and it depends on the type of plants that you want to keep. The second rule is that light is finite. Space is finite. Your time and energy to take care of your plants is also finite. The third rule is that plants that have what they need will flourish, but their needs will also increase as they grow. And the final lesson, the hardest and probably most important lesson, is that you can't just keep infinitely adding plants. The math just, the math ain't mathin'. The math doesn't work. I'm sorry. I really romanticized being able to like just keep getting more plants like i'll find room i will but like that's not how that's not how light works i wasn't adding windows i wasn't adding time in my day to make sure that they're cared for blah 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 blah, blah. so many things saying so many things i'm getting so thirsty from saying so many things All right, this is a little bit more difficult. So, oh, that's a burp, that's a burp. That was easy though. That part, that came out very easily. The rest of the words might not. So plants, plants were pretty much my personality for, for quite a while, for quite some time. Like I self-identified as a plant person and when something is part of your identity, it's important for it to go well for you to feel good about yourself. It wasn't the entire part of my identity, thank goodness, this is why it's important to diversify the things that bring you joy, but once I had an apartment with a little bit more space, I started collecting plants. So one here, one there, and they just started like adding up and I was really, really happy about that. I started propagating some, I gave some to friends, and I became known as kind of the, the plant person amongst like the people who knew me. So it literally became part of my identity, like both internally, like what I like to do, and also externally what I became kind of known for. When all of my plants were kind of like doing well and thriving and growing and being all like lush and, and beautiful, I felt really good about myself. But when they started declining, I just felt like it was this big weight I had a hard time getting rid of. Like I wanted to give plants to friends, but I couldn't. I wish I'd come to accept the fact that my plants weren't bringing me joy sooner because then I would have been postured to do something about it a lot faster. When should I convince yourself that, oh yeah, taking, my, taking care of my plants is fun. I have so many plants, it's fun. Um, and you keep kind of gaslighting yourself over and over again to, It works for a little bit, but eventually it stops working. So right now I acknowledge that it's a thing that used to be fun, 
and that currently feels like a bit of a burden. And yeah, that's the whole premise of this video, it's I want to make it fun again. I think this is a lesson in vigilance for me. What I'm taking out of this whole experience is that I have to be careful not to let things that bring me joy turn into something that, that very much doesn't. Or, you know, if that's happening, like for me to acknowledge it and make a plan around it and, you know, accept it rather than kind of hold on. Like that's the worst part, it's like holding on to the thing that you are so convinced is, is bringing you joy and happiness and then um, even if it's not like just because you want to continue that narrative zero on ten don't recommend I think we've spent enough time talking about our feelings yes uh, it's not that deep it's not that complex it's just like Here's a thing that used to bring me joy that now doesn't because I overcommitted. So the promise I'm making myself after fixing this whole threat problem is uh, no, no new plants, or at least no. Another day of killing the thrips. Uh, today is a very exciting day. It's the final day of spraying every single one of the plants. And I'm, I'm just really excited to be over with this bullshit. In theory, by spraying slash dunk tanking all of the plants today, we'll be getting the last of the thrips that may have been hiding in the leaves the first time that we did it uh, two weeks ago. So this is exciting. I'm, I'm very excited. Hopefully this works. Okay, I am very happy to announce that it's over. It's done. There will be no more insecticide spraying, unless the thrips come back, in which case, uh, fuck plants. But uh, very happy to be done with this. I'm thinking about a clip that I shot a couple days ago, also. Oops. I'm thinking about a clip that I shot a couple days ago where I was talking about my feelings around the whole plant thing. And I think, I think that at this point, if this doesn't work and I have to do something drastic, like get rid of most of the plants or whatever it is, I will be at peace with it because I'll know that I did my best. And if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. I've done my best. I have to say, I've not seen a, thing, a, th a, single, th a, th a single thrip since I started this whole endeavor. So I, th I, think, it wor I think it's working. I think it's working. This video is gonna be so fucking long, but the intro was very good, so I hope I hope that compensates. To all the thrips watching from presumably hell, good riddance fuckers. Good fucking riddance. Well, here's an angle that we're not used to. I'm about to do a very, very hard thing. So I recently got my driver's license and this is my very first time driving a car on my own. So I'm like, so this is the car. And of course it started raining a little bit. I am very nervous. I'm reali I realize I have to parallel park out of here. I'm not sure how that's gonna work, but we're just gonna get over our fear and we're gonna do it. We're gonna do it. We we got this. Oh. Oh, so it's an electric car, therefore it's not making the little vroom vroom sounds. It's a little destabilizing for me. Okay, let's go. Let's go, 
Oh, baby. Just go, just go, please. <laughs> People are being so nice, but they don't recognize I'm bad at this. Okay. Or new to this, rather. All right. And we are going. Heart is thumping, I am at a traffic light. Right, left, okay. Oh, this is good. It's a little hot in here, how do I turn down the temperature? It's always the first five minutes that give me the most anxiety. Right now, my anxiety is like a solid six on 10, instead of the eight on 10 that it was. Can I make a U-turn here? I don't think that's a good idea. I don't think that's advisable. All these people are not using their turn signals. Fuck them. No parking. I don't know what this means. 12.30, oh god, I don't know. Nope. Yeah, I put it in park because I'm parking. That's, that's not how it works because I'm not done parking. Ooh, that's bumpy. What was that? What's happening? Oh, it's in neutral. That would... Okay, we're good. We did it. We did it. We parked. We've arrived. We've arrived successfully. Anxiety level is still a six. <laughs> The moral of the story is uh, do hard things every now and again. Try to do hard things. You can do hard things. I, I, I have the intrusive thought right now of honking the horn for no reason. I'm not gonna do it, but I'm just, just communicating that. I'm gonna go to the gym now. I'm gonna go to the gym and work out and do a different type of hard thing that I find relaxing. It's the final day of Killing the Thrips, and what a beautiful day it is. Just received a shipment of beneficial insects in the mail. So it comes with this. Captain is very curious. And it comes with these little ice packs to keep it nice and cool. And here we have it. Entomite and Thripor. Captain, what are you... No. <laughs> So this one is gonna go into the dirt to eat any of the baby thrips. And this one, yeah, these are the these are the ones that eat all stages of thrips. For those of you who don't want to see any sort of bug type content, uh, skip to this timestamp. You can see some movement in here, and that's good. That means they're alive. I'm not really concerned about releasing these bugs into my apartment because they only eat other bugs. First, we're gonna apply the entomite into the soil, and then we're gonna put the thripor onto the leaves and, well, also into the soil. I'll, I'll go in the same place. All right, next thing we're gonna apply these bugs. And uh, honestly, this, this part's a little scary because they are bigger. Oh my God, there's so many of them. There's so many of these. Oh my God, okay, yeah, the, the bug warning is warranted. So all of the beneficial insects have been applied to all the plants, and now they're just gonna work their magic and eat any of the thrips that we might have missed. All right, we are done. And I find it very fitting that the sun is coming out on this ending of a very dark chapter. The moral of the story is that you can do hard things. I can do hard things. We can all do hard things. And it actually becomes easier to do hard things the more you do it. So for those of you who made it this far, let me know in the comments what's something that you found a little bit difficult to get started, but that you'd like to kind of get a little extra accountability push for. Uh, just like speak it into existence, into the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video, I encourage you to subscribe if you haven't already. I put out videos 
similar to this one, just not always about plants. I'm gonna keep monitoring the plants for the next few weeks, but either way, no matter how this goes, I am feeling a lot better about the whole plant situation, and, and that's what we set out to do. Alright, thanks for watching. I will I will see you in the next one.